There we go. Good morning, digital mentors. Hello, hello. This is Diane Hockman. I'm coming to you live from Slidell, Louisiana is where I am today. Uh, this is my new, my new cockpit over here. Uh, I was just up in New York visiting the parents. I was just in the Caribbean. I'm always running around because that's part of the life of a digital mentor. We get to decide when we do, what we do, um, and, and, and that's the most beautiful part of becoming a digital creator. Um, I've been doing this for 25 years, uh, in and out in different facets of the industry, in the space, and um, I love to travel. So I'm always traveling. Other people watch me and they go, oh, they're exhausted. You know, I'll put up posts about a missing bag or getting delayed, and they're like, I'm exhausted just watching you. They want to stay home. They want to live on a lake. They want to paint. They want to play their guitar, whatever it may be for you. The whole idea of becoming a digital mentor and learning to control your destiny is what this place is all about. So um, today, the title of today's call is The Edge of Greatness. Uh-oh, if, uh, if my TV is restarting, that means my internet might restart. And that's scaring me. So when I see that doing that uh, behind me, uh, okay, hopefully let's keep our fingers crossed. The edge of greatness. When we come down the road in our business, and again, I'm speaking from 25 years of being around, we learn the skills and, and this applies to anything, anything, anything you do in life. If you're going to play the piano you learn the skills you learn where your fingers go you do the scales right you do the scales on a guitar you chop things when you're cooking you learn how to manage the heat you go through the skills and it is fairly easy to become and you may not feel like it but i'm telling you the truth it's fairly easy to become proficient in pretty much anything you want to become proficient in, unless it's something outside of the physicality of what you're able to do. But, you know, pretty much everybody can use a computer. Everybody can use a phone. So it's pretty easy to become proficient. You just make a decision. You take a month, two months, three months. You decide, I'm going to learn the skills. I'm going to learn how to build a, a, a page. I'm going to learn how to build a course. You can, you know, we have workshops, how to create an irresistible offer, all different kinds of workshops that we do here. I'm going to take 90 days and I'm going to learn the skills. So the first question is always, have you learned the skills? Have you learned the skills? Do you have a checklist? And I know we do of the fundamental skills we need. And if, if you haven't learned them, practiced them and applied them, then that's what you want to focus on. Okay. Cause it's now we're coming into October. So we got October, November, December. It's the last quarter of the year. Okay. We got the end of 2023 and then we're into the new year. So you could close out this year spectacularly strong if you evaluate where you are and when you sit and you go, okay, I've mastered this. By the way, um, tonight I do my, uh, and if you happen to be watching this at a later date, it's the fourth uh, Monday of the month. I do my monthly mastermind I've been doing here at Digital Mentors for years on end. It's called The Cutting Edge. And I talk in there and there's a great recording, which you can access. If you went to thecuttingedge.com and joined us, you can access the recording immediately. It's called Stacking Skills, right? And I do this. It's like making sandwich, you know, first you put the bread, then you put the cheese then you put the ham or whatever you like, right? Then you put the tomato, then you put the lettuce, and, you know, and the mayo and, you, and you're stacking, you're stacking a sandwich. Think about that. If anybody still remembers the reference of the Dagwood sandwich, he would stack it high. Um, it's the same thing with your career in marketing. You're going to stack your skills. You're going to learn each one, you're going to solidify it. And then you're going to learn the next one. And you're going to use the next one in conjunction, like a jigsaw puzzle, right? They click together with the first one. And then you're going to use the next one in conjunction with the first two. And you keep stacking them and you get to a point where you have some skill and some experience. And this is, like I said, fairly easy to do. It's strictly repetition and decision that I'm going to master these skills. For example, 
um, building simple sites, simple funnels, it seems complicated, but if you actually dedicated a month to it and worked on it an hour a day, you would be a master. Okay. It usually takes me, um, whenever I'm using something new, new software, whatever, it takes me a little bit of repetition. It's funny. I was just, before we got on, I was waiting for the call to start and I was making a TikTok. And I remember the first time I made a TikTok and I thought it was so complicated and I thought it was so confusing and I, it was so overwhelming. And now I can make a TikTok uh, anywhere between 30. I can make one between 30 and 60 seconds. It's like, if I pre-recorded the content, it's like, boop, 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 and it's gone. It takes me 60 seconds to put out a piece of content that I found incredibly confusing when I began. What's the difference? The difference is the decision to master the skill. So if you decide I'm going to master uh, the site build, cool. Okay. You do that and you get proficient and what starts to happen is the capture page that used to take you a whole day literally takes you 45 minutes. If that, you know, if you're any good at it, right? Some people are really quick. Me, it takes me a little time. It takes me a little repetition. The setting up the, the, um, the payment gateways and the payment processes, it used to take a long time. It was very complicated. Now I can set that up in minutes. Setting up a course, right? A mini course. Um, I can record something in 20 minutes, take a page or a funnel that I've already created, swap out the headlines, swap out the copy, um, connect it to the payment gateway. And literally I can have an offer in like two hours. I can have a money generating offer in two hours. So that everybody needs to just make the decision that I'd like to learn. And everybody needs to let go of the stories that we tell ourselves, and this is not a lecture. This is a choice. You know, a lot of people are trying to motivate you. I'm not trying to motivate you, maybe inspire you. Um, you know, a, a housewife that was $40,000 in credit card debt with two little kids figured out how to do all this stuff long before we had this, by the way, I'm wearing my old school hat today, old school hat. Not many of these, hats. The, these are, this is, this is, this is a classic that tells you I'm a classic, right? Um, you know, you make a decision, you make a decision, right? And then we get to the point where there's a lot of people that have a set of skills. So first you got to decide, I want the set of skills. Next, you got to decide, I'm going to practice every day to get the set of skills. I'm, I'm going to, I want to play the piano. I'm going to practice every day so, till I can play the piano. Okay. It's time for to do a recital. Okay. So now you get to that place. And if you're not at the place that I'm describing yet, Go back and focus on those things. Take the rest of the year and get yourself competent in those skill sets, how to connect an autoresponder, how to send out those emails, how to write an email with AI today. It's a lot easier than it was. Um, you know, AI makes everything easier. The, the issue with all of this technology used to be writing the content and now you know, if you've trained your AI, it's it's pretty easy to write the content. So that challenge goes away. That skill becomes much less, right, that, that you need to conquer. But then we get to a point, and I need a sip of coffee. Coffee. See, you can hear the New York in me. I grew up in New York, and even though I didn't grow up in New York City, I, I lived in New York till I was 12, New York City. Uh, when I say coffee and a couple of other things that comes out, don't judge me. Anyway, let me take a sip of coffee. So you get those skills, you get them in place. Okay. You want to be a mechanic. You learn how to change the oil. You learn how to fix a carburetor, whatever it is, whatever it is. Think about you and your life and your, you know, if you're handy around the house, you learn how to do some simple plumbing. You learn how to change a light bulb. You learn how to put in a, you know, a fixture, you learn how to, you know, simple stuff around the house. So you get to that point where you have some skills and a lot of people have those skills. But then the question becomes, do you want to go all the way? Because you are standing at the edge of greatness. You can play the piano, you can play a concerto, you can play, you know, a song for your mom. Do you want to go to the place where people stop and stare and listen to your piano music? You can fix 
something. You can do some simple carpentry work. You know how to, you know, cut some molding, right? You know how to use, uh, you know, a certain kind of saw or a power tool. Um, but do you want to become somebody who crafts something? You're on the edge of greatness. And it's the same in the digital marketing space, especially today. A lot of people have access to some place to learn the simple skills. And we teach that here. But we go a step further because we are a leadership factory. And what this place has done is created more greatness than any other joint around. Okay. More greatness. And I could sit and I can rattle off the names of the people that went all the way to making millions. Okay. I'm one of them. But the question was never, is it possible? The question was always, do you want to? Because when you get to the edge of greatness, where you have a skill set, you know how to do something, you're competent, you're at the field, you're, you're at the kind of lined up with the rest of the people. Lots of people apply to medical school. Very few become that highly paid specialist. Lots of people, um, you know, play in garage bands. Very few become big rock stars. Lots of people play basketball. Very few become that NBA um, you know, Hall of Famer. Um, I used to, when I lived in Connecticut every year, I would go um, the Basketball Hall of Fames in Massachusetts, just north of where I lived. And every year I would get invited to the enshrinement and the ring ceremony and the, and the big party where all the families came for the people that had reached greatness in basketball. I was there when Michael Jordan got uh, enshrined. I was there David Robinson, um, just trying to think so many, like I, I, I it's like, and, and I'm not a basketball fan. Why did I go? Because I'm fascinated by people that choose greatness. Greatness is when you decide to become an artist and hone your craft. Greatness is when you decide there's an audience that you serve and you show up every day whether or not you feel like it. Greatness is when you decide that you want to leave a body of work behind you. And by the way, greatness, you can make a lot of money in your greatness, but greatness isn't about money. You might want to write that down. Greatness isn't about money. Michael Jordan didn't practice like he practiced for money. His mom got him those contracts, <laughs> Air Jordan and stuff like that. Go, go read his story. Um, it was because he wanted to be among the best. He wanted to walk with those that chose greatness. Now, let me take that back a step because depending on where you are in your life, like when I was doing all of this, I had young children. Certain things were not an option based upon my goals and my desires at the time. My children were my greatest work. They're 27 and 30 now. And I knew I only had one shot. So staying up all night, being on the phone all day, um, running you know, around the globe, that wouldn't have served my family and it wouldn't have... Um, it certainly wouldn't have helped my children, which is my biggest focus. So I couldn't do certain things that somebody else might define as going to the edge of greatness. Somebody else might have said, well, you need to do calls at night. Somebody else might have said you need to be at all these meetings. Somebody else might have said, you know, I'm doing it wrong. And they did, by the way. But here's the thing. You're the person that gets to define what it is that means greatness to you, what you're willing to exchange to get to that level and what it is that you want. 
Are you somebody who wants to speak on stages? Are you somebody who wants to leave a body of work behind? To me, I'm really starting to think now I've, I've created so many things over the years and I've spoken so many words and there's millions, not millions, but thousands of hours of archives of me talking. In fact, if you join the cutting edge, the cutting edge.com, uh, excuse me, the cutting edge club.com, um, you'll see there's hours and hours and hours, a year's worth of archives in there. We have archives that are in video form. And then previous to that, we have the archives that are in audio form. So there's reams of hours just here at Digital Mentors of my words. And I'm really sitting here thinking about how I want to codify that as I become more mature. How do I want to lay that down for people coming down the road behind me? How do, what do I want to live, uh, leave as a legacy? So do I have to be somebody that runs arena events to achieve greatness? No. Do you have to be somebody that writes books? By the way, I haven't written a book. I started to write a book and it didn't come out of me. And everybody tells you, you have to write a book. I don't know. I think I'll write a book when I feel I should write a book. Writing a book um, isn't necessarily the mark of greatness. Having products isn't necessarily the mark of greatness. The mark of greatness is you committing to your highest level of you. And we give you the tools. We give you the framework. We give you the mechanism. We give you the environment. We give you the love and encouragement and potentially exposure, right? Exposure. If you create something, you know, we have the ability to, I'm, I'm saying we, I'm just an affiliate, just like, you know, a member, just like everybody else. Um, but th the company has the ability to give you a lot of exposure. They gave me a lot of exposure over the years. But it's your decision to step to the edge of greatness, to unfurl your wings and fly. My name is Diane Hockman, and this has been the wake up call and I'll stick around and chat for a few minutes, but uh, tonight, 8 PM Eastern, the cutting edge, it actually, it's the cutting edge club.com Megan. Uh, sorry. I said it wrong. It's the cutting edge club. <laughs> She's so quick. It's the cutting edge club.com. Um, <laughs> I don't even know my own link, <laughs> um, but we do a mastermind. I'll be out tonight uh, talking with the gang and it is recorded. So if you can't attend live, you can always watch it at any time. I have lots of people that watch over and over and over again. Anybody have a question or comment? about the idea of the edge of greatness, about even, see, you want to get your skills in order so that you can get to the edge. Okay. You get to the edge, the edge. And then it's like, you're, you're standing at the precipice and deciding, deciding, do I want to go? You can make a buck. I'm going to do one more thing, Megan. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk a little longer. Um, this is a story I've told many times or kind of an example. Um, if you think about it, um, think about something that you're not good at, okay? something that you're not good at. Cause we were all taught you have to improve the things you're not good at. So like, for example, me, I am not good at reading. I'm ADHD. I have a hard time just sitting and reading like a novel, um, is very challenging for me. Sorry. That's just embarrassing, but it's the truth. So when I was a kid in school, um, they didn't understand that the, the, like the diagnosis of, of, of those learning disabilities or whatever. I was a smart kid, but they couldn't understand why I couldn't read the novels. Um, so let's say I was a three or a four, um, maybe even a five, you know, I mean, I can read, I certainly can read. I just had a hard time focusing. So let's say I'm a five. Um, if I spent all my time improving my reading skills, um, I could become a 10 and 10 is very good right? If I was a three, I could become a six. I double my skills. So think of something that you're not that good at. Okay. Not that good at. And then if you focus and that's where you put all your focus and you double that skill set, you might get to, you know, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. Right. But I want you to now think about something you're really good at something you are really good at. So for example, I am really good at writing. I'm really good at it. I'm also pretty gosh darn good at speaking. Okay. In fact, let's use speaking. Um, I would say 
Like I can, you can wind me up and put me in front of a crowd. Like you could, I, I in fact, I've been at events. I was at a, an event with Ray Higdon and somebody was sick and they said, can you fill her spot? And I had to go up and speak off the cuff with no preparation. I can do it easily. I'm lucky. I'm, I'm, I have no stage fear. So I would say I'm a, I'm a nine speaker. Okay. I've spoken on stages. I've shared the stage with Gary Vaynerchuk and Bill Walsh and all these famous people. I'd say I'm a nine. If I spent the next year and I doubled my skills, if I practiced every day, if I spoke every day, if I went live once or twice a day, if I did small events, if I, you know, went out in the community and looked for places to speak, I doubled my skill. Well, a nine doubled is 18, which makes no sense on a scale of one to 10. So what I would become is off the chart, off the chart, right? So I could be good or I can be off the chart. I want you to think about it, which would make more sense spending a lot of time trying to remediate and get better at your weakness or going off the chart because name me one field that pays for average or pays really good. I'm talking good money pays for average or pretty good. There's lots of jobs in, in spaces where you can be average or pretty good and you'll get paid. But if you truly want to go to the moon, you need to, to step to the edge of greatness and go off the chart. But here's the question. Do you have to go off the chart in the same arena as somebody else? Maybe to you speaking is a horror. Maybe to you, maybe you have a stutter. Maybe you're just afraid. Maybe to you, speaking is a horror. You could spend the whole year trying to learn how to be a better speaker. You'd still be average, right? But maybe you're technical and you can whip off sites like nothing else. Or maybe you're good one-on-one -on -one with people. And if you became better, you'd be off the chart. You'd be closing sales left and right. Maybe you're good at writing. And you write, you know, courses and different things. Maybe you're good on camera, but not in person. You could be good at a million things. But the question always comes down to when you evaluate, you, everybody has to have certain skills. You know, like you got to be able to read, right? I, I'm not a good reader, but I know how to read because you have to read. I'm not good with technology, but I know how to put together my site because you have to, right? So you got to get a basic set of skills. And then you stand at the edge of greatness. And that's when you decide who do I want to be? Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? And that choice is yours. You can't buy that success. You can't get that success from somebody else. That's when you decide who you are, what your skill set is, and if you want to head towards greatness. And listen, you can still make a living if you decide not to. You can, you can make decent money. You can be free. You can be out of a job. But if you want the big deal, this is the play. Guys, I'll see you tonight. If you liked any of this, come on down and join us. It's $25. It, you get all the archives included. Um, and I really don't push it a lot or make a big fuss about it because that's where I talk about the best stuff the secret stuff, the hidden order, the thought processes. And I bring out cutting edge stuff that nobody's seen yet. I, I, I'm, I'm almost always ahead of the crowd because I scan this stuff and I bring it to the members in this group. So we'll see you tonight. Everybody have a beautiful day. Thank you for being here with me and everybody take care.